Beginning our second decade of university sports coverage, TSN proudly presents CIAU Volleyball. Welcome to a full gymnasium, the Ben Avery Gymnasium at Laurentian University in Sudbury to watch the men's volleyball finale featuring the Rouge or of Laval University from Quebec City and the Bisons from the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg. Hi everybody, Peter Watts and Vic Lindell with you. We're glad you could join us. Uh, we are a little late because of the uh, coverage of the Briar and we're going on to the Briar after this, but for now we've got volleyball for you at a great matchup featuring uh, two of the really strong programs in men's volleyball in the country. Two outstanding programs and two outstanding teams and the same matchup that we had last year. University of Manitoba, average height, six foot five. The University of Laval, the average height, six foot one. That height for Manitoba translates into a great block. It translates into a great attack. Laval has energy. Laval has enthusiasm. Laval has great defense and a very quick offense. Garth Pischke says, we can grind them down if we go four or five. Laval says we want to take it in three. Well, Laval hasn't lost a game here in its first two matches. Uh, Manitoba was pushed to four in the semifinal against Man uh, Dalhousie on uh, Saturday, but managed to prevail. So two of the best programs in the country represented here in the men's final for the CIAU National Championship. We look at the officials uh, for this uh, matchup. John Mokler is the umpire on the floor. He's from Brampton, Ontario. And the referee is Guy Bradbury in the stand. He's from St. John's, Newfoundland. And we're just about set to get started here with the first ball of this match. It's that incredible defense of Laval and that huge spiking of Manitoba. Bilodeau, very experienced national team player, getting that ball down. Francois Bilodeau. Well, you saw the uh, height advantage and you saw the uh, energy level of the Laval team. So a good start to our storyline because the two teams have managed to set a tone for what we expect to be a very competitive match. Laval won last year in four and it was an upset. Manitoba has had all year to brood on this matter of not having won the national final last year. They've gone 44 wins and just one loss and that was in an exhibition to Penn State University back in January. Well, some people are suggesting that that brooding could also be kind of a ticking away as they're playing this match. So one of the things that Manitoba has to overcome is uh, that match from last year, and they've got to play it because it's a brand new game. Scott Kosky with the good set. Great block at the net. Ken Cron, number five, and Jules Martin's number six. That's been a consistent storyline the whole week for Manitoba. Well, Cron is now playing in as a middle blocker. Last year, he played on the outside, and he said he just loves playing that position. He just loves that block, because now he gets in on every one of the blocks. And a good job there by Laval's number 14, Gislain Russo, who's only six feet tall, but got a long way up in the air that time, and forced a side out for Laval. Manitoba leads 2-0 here in game one. Best of five for the CIU title, men's volleyball. Uh, Jules Martin's number six came out of the back row and gave it his best shot, but it was dug up beautifully in the back row by Bergeron of Laval. Brom once again in the middle. Talk about the adjustment. How difficult is it to move from an outside power sort of roll into the middle? I'd say it's fantastically difficult. And uh, when I was talking to um, Kron, he said that uh, it all of a sudden clicked after about a month in there. But usually what happens is that guys that have played the outside and now they play the middle, they think they're in a revolving circus because, you know, you don't know which way to go. Here's Kron in action at the net once again. Number five in the black jersey for Manitoba. Watch the block. Right there. That, that is a huge block, and that's why they call nickname for Kron as Mr. Crush. That time, Vincent Pichette got the winner as it went off the hand of Scott Kosky at the net. So side out Laval. 3-1. Manitoba leads here in game one. Good 
job up at the net once again by Manitoba's Garrett Cott, who's been very quietly and very effective. He's become quite a star for this team. Well, when you see Cott come in there and his nickname is Sask Boy because he's from Saskatchewan. And there, a winner by Gilbert Remiard, side out now to Quebec. De Laval. Well, Remy are, uh, played professional volleyball in Monaco, and he credits that with uh, really improving his game. He's had a very solid couple of days of activity here on behalf of the Rouge Or. He wears number four for Laval. Up in the air, and he hits the winner. This time, Prime could not block it at the net. Remyard gets the point, and it's 3-2 Manitoba. You notice the other big hitter now up in the front row for Manitoba, um, Andy Zorowski. He hit that one off high off the top of Lavelle's block, but Lavelle plays right on the end line, and they can pick it up if they soft block. Jules Martins got uh, dug up earlier, but he was making darn sure this time he cut and went more down the line instead of cross court. He has been difficult to stop all week long and all Canadian this year. Jules Remillard, wears, or Jules uh, Martins, rather, wears number six for Manitoba. And Cron just about hit the winner. It's ruled out. Well, I asked his father, I said, how did you pick up uh, that name? Well, he said, I couldn't name him after myself, so this is the closest I could come. Jules, and he said he is a jewel. Now there's the example of, you know, you're talking 6-7, Zorowski, and he's up against 5-9 of Morant. Take a look at how high we're going, right over top of that block. Now that is important to get that day. Zorowski with a winner once again, 6-7 third year science student out of River East Collegiate in Winnipeg. Where's number 11? Played on the national student team last summer, led the Manitoba under-21 team to a national championship last summer. So he's a great player, just coming into his own as a university competitor. I asked him, who were some of the people that have influenced your career? Well, obviously, Garth Fischke, but two other play, uh, coaches. Terry Danlock, who was a uh, coach of the university team, along with Frank Ans, were two other people that he credits with influencing his career. Good block at the net, but the ball goes out of bounds off the hand of Jules Martin. Jules wouldn't want to call that a good block. No, he probably wouldn't. He wants to pull that ball inside. But he says that's one of the strong points that he's got, playing on that right side and blocking. And at six, I think it says 6'6 six, six in the program. But when I talked to Garth, he said the guy's still growing. He's about 6'7 now. And you take a look at how high he is as he went right over the top that time. Beautiful set on the last point by Scott Koski. Martins with the winner. Got the ball in that time. And Zorowski puts it into play on a side out for Manitoba. work at the net that time. Trevor Dimitri, number three, and Martins was there as well. Dimitri says, I'm just a plugger. He said, I'm not too flashy, but I'm going to be there every single time. And when you're up there at six foot four, six foot five, and you've got Jules Martins beside you, you know it's going to be a great block. 6-2 Manitoba in the first game of this best of five of the CIU national title. Laval wants a timeout. Garth Pischke has a few words for his troops, and we'll have a few more words when we come back to the correction after this. is Francois Morin, third year French studies student from Laval University. He's the setter on his team, Manitoba with a point just out of the, our break. And they lead 6-2 here in game one. It was interesting to see uh, Jules Martins doing the setting. He is the actual the backup setter on this team, and he loves to set the ball. The winner goes to Garrett Cott, number four for Manitoba. But this is good quality volleyball. These two teams have gotten into this match in a hurry. When, when I was uh, speaking with Moran, the setter for Lavelle, I asked him who had influenced his career. Fabiani, who's the, been the setter for France, 
Mauricio, who'd been the center for Brazil, are two people that he fashioned his game after and learned an awful lot from. But the other one who's really interesting was the setter for the Chinese national team, Yan Chi Lang. I'll tell you more about that later. Another winner for Todd. He's been unstoppable from the left side of the court. 6'6 man from Yorkton High School in Weyburn, third year education student, and here's Jules Martins to serve now. The Manitoba, and the ball is just long. In the tournament so far, it was interesting you talked about Cott because he had a 45% kill efficiency. Now, most coaches would like to get a high 30s, but 45% is incredible. And that's what he's had in this tournament so far. 45% means keep giving him the ball. Great block at the net that time by another young man who's had a terrific year and a great tournament. Francois Bilodeau, number 13 for Laval. You'll hear a lot about that young man in the next few years. He'll be part of the national team program, I think, for a while. Great block again. My goodness, Ken Cron has really had a great tournament. Pachette uh, was doing the, the setting that time, number six for Laval. He's also the backup setter, and uh, you don't see him setting that often, but he was doing a fair amount of setting. There. Zorowski just a little bit long. It'll be side out Laval. Manitoba leads 6-3 here in the first game. And it'll be Gilbert Remiard to serve for the Rouge Or. Players could learn an awful lot by watching Zorowski because he hits so hard. Even the good ones have a kerfuffle once in a while. Scott Koski and Ken Cron, both fifth-year performers. At that time, they got the signals crossed up, and the ball falls in. And a point for Laval, 6-4 Manitoba. There's the combination. That's the combination where Pichette coming in to hit it. Well, Pichette went with the tip shot, which was inappropriate possibly, but our umpire indicating there was a net violation on Manitoba. The umpire is John Mokler. He's from Brampton. Called it against Scott Koski. So Laval, which was down by four before calling a timeout, has crept back to within one. And that's a tip ball, and it'll be side out Manitoba. Ken Cron, who got the winner, goes back to serve now for the Bisons. Oh, Pichette gets up high. Remember him from last year, Peter. He's up high, and he doesn't care how big that block is. He's going to hit it off the block. Remember now, the storyline coming in, Manitoba with a, on average, four-inch height advantage over Laval. Bichet is only six feet. That time Bichet hit the winner. And Bichet, when he plays the back row, he tries to cover at least 50% of the back row when he's playing defense. It's really quite fascinating to watch him back there. Scott Koski to serve. 6-5, Manitoba leads, game one. Now that's what you call a step round. So Bilodeau on that particular situation, there was only two hitters there, so Bilodeau had to do the step round, and he got by Andy Zorowski. Villado, one of two players in this tournament who will go to the Pan American Games in Argentina on Monday. Jay Magus of, Sus of Saskatchewan is going as well on that team, which will be coached by Clement Lemieux, the national team coach. Jay Magus, a uh, great setter for uh, University of Saskatchewan. That was a, a great. Uh, uh, combination that we've just had. Villado with excellent serving. First now, ace of the tournament, or of the uh, game, rather. Look at how far back he goes. Now, you're allowed to go back 10 meters, but this gym is a little bit small, so they had to cut the Terraflex off a little bit. And for people that want really tough float serves, they like to take the full 10 meters to create an incredible float. Last five points of the game, all won by Laval. Down 6-2 at the timeout. Got the last five points, they have the lead. The ball's in play once again. Side out now to Laval. Remiard hits another winner. Remiard coming out of the left back, which is not a normal position to hit out of the back row, but they pulled the entire Manitoba block over to the other side. 
And still they cannot stop Martins. Well, who hammered that ball right out of the gym. Rousseau, the middle uh, blocker, went up with uh, the uh, Dimitrik, the uh, Manitoba middle, and that gave Jules that one-on-one -on -one situation. And there's a nice one-on-zero combination. So we ran an X there, set the second person in, and the ball is down. Greg Berger on to serve. Seven, six, Laval. Well, that time, the ball out of bounds off the Laval block. Side out, Manitoba. I was talking to Paul Gratton, who used to play on the national team, and he said that Canadian university teams are using the back row, but he feels they've got to be a little bit faster on those back row sets. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have three blockers. And that was the case there. There were three blockers or two blockers up, certainly for Lavelle, but they blocked it out of bounds. Now, when Jules Martins comes out of the back row, he's a lot faster. The winner that time by Garrett Cotton once again. He's back to serve. Side out Manitoba. Eisen's trail. 7-6. Well, Garrett Cott also uh, indicated Scott Koski was a player that had had, a, or a person that had an influence on his career long, of course, with Garrett. Save the net by Koski. Ah, the block works again. Tron and Koski once again deny Eric Bergeron a chance for a kill. Well, on that particular one, it, it is been set, but he was off the net. He was off the net, and they still timed the block correctly. Oh, great job that time by Laval. We saw that quickness at work. Reacting quickly to the ball and hitting the winner. Side out Laval, all even at seven in game one. They got Villado and they got Moran up there, but they um, only have two hitters and one setter, so this is their weak rotation right now. That ball ruled out. Remyard had it into the back court, but it just went across the line. Ken Cron to serve. Manitoba back in the lead at eight to seven. So. Now, Ken Cron made an attempt to serve that ball short to take Bilodeau out of the play. Bilodeau, though, was able to pass it and come right in and hit a 31, which is a quick ball in the three position. Manitoba's kind of hit the skids here in the last uh, few minutes. They haven't been anywhere near as effective as they were at the outset. They got off to the quick start. They have stalled a little bit ever since. That time it was long. Point to goes to Laval, back in the lead at 9-8. to eight. Andy Zorowski was trying to indicate there might have been a touch, but Andy, I don't think you uh, got anywhere near those hitters, those blockers that time. Martins that time. So I don't know if that'll show up in the stats, but I blocked that one quite effectively. Yeah. Jules Martins going right up there, and he played the ball very nicely off the hands of the blocker. Good dig by Koski. He is the top digger on their team. He's had the most digs of any player this year. Koski saved another one there. And Jaroski that time got the winner. Young man has been uh, the most potent offensive force so far for the Bisons. Manitoba right now is been passing at about a 52% average. Now, that's 52% of the balls have come up, which I call perfect balls that you can set three attackers on. 52% uh, isn't quite good enough. You'd already picked up on that, Peter. They've got to pass a little tighter to the net. Francois Bilodeau to serve for Laval. All even at nine, the serve is long. Side out Manitoba. Net violation called on Jules Martin. 
Side out Laval. Jules Martins was just touching the net on that one. Francois Moran to serve for Laval. And that time, Remiard was caught underneath the net. Just crossed his way into Manitoba territory. So out of that situation, which, which you saw, saw somebody going up there to pretend they were going to hit it, there was a carry ball called by Ty Bradbury from Newfoundland. again by Gislain Rousseau, his second winner. There it is. Russo, as um, Garth Pischke said, has to be the best six-foot tall blocker in the country. You don't have very many people playing middle under, you know, under 6'6". And he plays very effectively. Just got a statistic. Laval has 68%. Is, and that is power, taking part of the net as well. 68% passing for Lavelle right now. Uh, there's a play by a guy who's been around this game for five years at the university level. He's been hammering it all game long, and this time just a little touch over the net. And it's a winner for Manitoba, and the Bisons lead 10-9 here in game one. Well, you know, he's a, an incredibly powerful hitter and a smart hitter, but it's interesting. He's also the second on the team, four number of digs for the year, 214 digs. And Jules Martin is one of their leaders when it comes to aces. Jules, by the way, is an excellent beach player, and he just loves playing beach. And I think it was about two years ago, he got cut from the National University team. So he said, great, I'll play beach. But it looks like Frank Enns is looking for him this year when they go to Tokyo. I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of these athletes will be on the FISU Games team that goes to Fukuoka, Japan in August. Training camp in Edmonton in mid-July. Frank Enns, who will coach that team, with assistance from Terry Daniluk, the coach at Alberta, tells me he's got an outstanding pool of athletes to pick from. We've seen a lot of them in this tournament, and we probably will not have seen all of them. There are a few more out there. Zorowski, by the way, on that last one, was called for being ahead of the premier line. And that's the quickest that I've seen um, Ken Cron hit the ball. Cron now is up. In this tournament, he has been delaying his hit and hitting a slower middle, and that's one of his fastest. So he's got himself pumped for this tournament. Or more particularly, for this match. Martin's got the winner. Rousseau could not get out of the way in time, and the ball hit him. And it's 12-10 Manitoba. Garrett caught to serve for the Bisons. That ball is in. A winner for Laval, side out for the Rouge Or. Right now, number five, um, Ken Kwan has four kills for Manitoba. So you've selected him as an outstanding player, and he's right now leading on kills, Peter. And Zorowski gets the winner there. Now, that was rather interesting. Kron went up, and Zorowski came inside more. Usually, Andy is right out at the antenna. So, Koski's mixing things up a little bit. A little different look. Good block at the net again. That time, Zorowski playing some defense for Manitoba. And we have a timeout on the floor as you look once again at a good job at the net. The ball actually hammered into it, but Zorowski was right there. We'll take a break. Timeout here in Laurentian. More to come. Stay with us. The moment. You can feel it coming. And you're ready to make it your own. Okay. The 
Let's go. 14 here. All right. Let's go. One boys, one dig now. We're back with you from the Ben Avery Gymnasium on the campus of Laurentian University in Sudbury. Peter Watson, Vic Lindell with you. You're watching the final game of the CIU Men's Volleyball Championships for 1995. Manitoba with a 13 to 10 lead here in game number one. Jaroski once again. Number 11 in black has been terrific in this first game. Ken Cron to serve. He's been pretty good too. Good defense in the backcourt by Martins. And a winner as it went off Remyard and hit the basketball net, pulled it up into the ceiling at the top. And the first game goes to the Manitoba Bisons by a score of 15 to 10. Game one of a best of five matchup with the National Men's Volleyball Championship for the CIU on the line. Laval won it last year over Manitoba, three games to one. Manitoba trying to get even in this personal rivalry, and it's been a great rivalry over the years. This sports break is brought to you by Canadian Tire. There's a lot more to Canadian Tire for a lot less. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our TSN Control Center. I'm Gord Miller. We'll be showing the Grand Prix of Miami later tonight on TSN. So if you don't want to know the result, turn away for a second. We'll tell you who won the race in Miami, the first IndyCar race of the season. It was Jacques Villeneuve of Canada, who uh, took the checkered flag. Paul Tracy didn't finish. He wiped out on the first lap. Mauricio Gugelemann was in second spot. In the NHL today, we can tell you a couple of games in the afternoon. First of all, we'll tell you that we will have the Indy race tonight at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific here on TSN. Let's tell you now about the uh, National Hockey League tonight. It's Detroit and Edmonton at the Edmonton Coliseum. Oilers win it 4-2. David Oliver scores two for the Oilers. In Anaheim, Chicago, it's the fourth shutout of the season for Ed Belfour, second of the year against the Mighty Ducks. We'll talk to you later on tonight on Sports Desk. From mufflers to brakes to tune-ups, under your car or under your hood, Canadian Tire has you covered because we have licensed technicians specially trained to perform each job, all with the experience that comes from servicing over 10,000 cars every day. And we install only quality parts backed by a nationwide guarantee. So when your car needs service, come to the place with the parts, the warranties, and the specialists you can trust to get the job done right. Canadian Tire. There's a lot more for your car for a lot less. We're back with you from Laurentian University at Sudbury as you check out the first team all Canadians. Three of them are centers. Scott Bagnell from Dalhousie, Scott Koski from Manitoba, Jay Magus from Saskatchewan. The other three are power hitters. Two from Laval, Francois Bilodeau and Gilbert Ramillard, and Jules Martin, a first team all Canadian from the University of Manitoba. The second team, Doug Bruce of Alberta, Jeff Chung of Toronto, Daryl Hees of Winnipeg, Ken Cron of Manitoba, Chris Schwartz of Dalhousie, who had a terrific final tournament, and Sean Smith from the University of Waterloo Warriors. The honorable mentions were Ross Ballard of UBC, David Cantor from Queens, Rob Kennedy of Saskatchewan, Vincent Pichette, who we're watching in action here from Laval, Greg Proctor of Alberta, and Andrew Zorowski, who was an honorable mention last year, but is making a good start on making all Canadian status in his own right in 1995-96. He's having a great tournament and a terrific final to this point. Ready to start in game two. First game to the Manitoba Bisons, 15 to 10. And Eric Bergeron to serve for the Rouge Or. Now that was Andy uh, making that pass. The thing you gotta like about Andy is that he's in his third year, but he's only just starting this year. And that's what a lot of players have to realize, that when you go into a strong program, particularly say at Manitoba, you might not be starting for a couple of years, so you've gotta be ready. Zorowski looks like he's ready. The same thing with Cott. Cott is the other player that's in his third year. He didn't start either. And those two players have now been given the primary responsibility of doing all the passing. Yet you go down through the list of bios, bios that were prepared by the players, and every single one of them will tell you how significant an impact Garth Bischke has had on their careers. So they don't brood about sitting on the bench. They work hard, they do their work in practice, they learn some things, and when they're ready to play, they're ready to step in and contribute right away. You know what Jules Martin said? He said, I was a project. He said, he said Garth picked me as a project. 
And take a look at the young man now. What a project. Might make the student team to go to Japan this summer. Well, if he doesn't, then there's not a whole lot of justice, just by the way. Busy summer in men's volleyball. Got a student team that'll go to the FISA Games in Japan in August. And of course, we're uh, getting set for national team training camp in Calgary with a busy, busy uh, fall season as the national team tries to qualify for the uh, Olympic Games in Atlanta next year. I talked to uh, Clement Lemieux just before he left today. He was running for the plane. And he said, to qualify, we have to finish in the top three in the World Cup. Qualification, by the way, is a little bit different now in volleyball than has been in the past. The only team guaranteed in right now will be the United States as a host. In the past, the Olympic winner was in. Now everybody has to qualify. So if you're in the top three in the World Cup, you're in. And I looked Clement straight in the eye and he said, yes, Vic, we're going for that top three in the World Cup. Great block at the net by Bellado, who will be a candidate for the Olympic team. The other thing that's complicating that story is that Cuba finished fourth at the World Championships last year. So all of a sudden, Cuba, which normally would get in through a different selection, will now be part of the Norseca zone to try and qualify. And the Cubans are formidable volleyball power and will be one of the teams that the Canadians have to beat if Canada is to be represented, at least in the first try. No, 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 that, that's if they go through the Norseca. But, but if they can finish in the top three in the World Cup, which, I mean, I think for the command to aim for that is incredible. I admire him for it. But let's face it, you've got to be aiming high. You can't be, you know, aiming saying, well, we're going to go there for experience. 4-1 Laval as we uh, look again at play here in the CIU championship. Remy R to serve for the Rouge Or. And they're off to a good start. Here in the second game after losing the first game, 15-10. Well, that was Mr. Crush, Ken Kwan, and he credits Bill Gadd as somebody that influenced his career, and also John Heckaway, who's been an assistant coach with Manitoba, and he's also assistant coach for the national women's team now. But a few of the players feel that John technically helped them in their volleyball. Strong, strong development programs in Manitoba. In fact, the schools that are here perennially there are 46 schools in the CIU in Canada, and there are only 10 that have ever won this championship. And you keep seeing the same schools year after year after year. It is no fluke that Dalhousie from the east and Manitoba and Winnipeg and schools like that, Laval from the Quebec Conference, it's no fluke that they're here. They run good development programs. They start young people at a young age. They get them trained in the skills, and they get, have a lot of experience playing the game at an elite level before they ever step on the court in a university uniform. So that by the time they get here, their skill level is very well developed. 4-1, Laval leads, and it's Villado to serve for the Rouge Or. Now, Kim Cron indicated that his strengths are defense and blocking. If you take a look at how tough he's hitting that ball today. Little center line violation on Manitoba, crossing that center line. John Mokler, the umpire from Brampton, made that call. 5-1 Laval leads. This is as far behind as Manitoba has been in three, comp three events in this tournament. And they're a little farther behind now. It's 6-1 Laval. And Garth Pischke, seen enough, says, I need a timeout to regroup my team. 6-1 Laval in game two, best of five for the CIU Men's Championship. Back with more volleyball from Sudbury. like you, it just won't quit. I meant it. One of the good coaches in the CIU hey, and a boys. terrific coach in Quebec does a lot of things to help the development of his sport in his province. Pascal Clement in his third season running the Rouge Or program. He succeeded hey, Clement Lemieux, hey. who's now coaching the men's national hey, team. Hey. And Pascal coached Laval to a 3-1 win over Manitoba in last year's CIU final. So in three years, he's had his team to the national tournament each time. 
chip and he's after another. A tip ball is the call there. And it will be a point to Laval. They lead seven to one. And Philadelphia to serve. Vic. Pascal uh, and the team have created a little mystique from the um, uh, the Asterix and Obelix uh, comic books. And they feel that they're from the village of La Moelle. And that's their little fortress, and they're out to defend it. So if anybody follows Asterix and Obelix, they'll know what the cartoon is. It's this little community against the world. That time, Bilodeau tried to hit the winner from well back in the court and buried the ball in the net. Two serving seven. And Scott Koski to put the ball in play for Manitoba. When you were talking about Pascal Clement a little while ago, he wrote a letter to China and said, hey, look, I'd like to come over and study volleyball in China. He got a letter back, and he went over there. He arrived just at the time of the Tiananmen Square fiasco. So he said it was fine, but they weren't practicing four or five hours a day. Probably practicing about an hour a day. But that's when he had the opportunity to meet with Yan Chi Lang. It was interesting because she wanted to go play professional volleyball in Switzerland. So guess what? She wanted to learn French. So he spent all that time with her learning everything she knew about setting. Martins gets the winner off the block of Laval's Eric Bergeron and Gislain Rousseau. Jules Martins sees himself eventually, maybe as a national team beach player. Beach volleyball now being in the Olympics. We're getting more people interested in getting ready to win a medal in Atlanta. Well, it's interesting because one of the people who's toying with the idea, and I don't know if he's talked to his family about this, so I may be speaking out of turn, but it's Garth Pischke, who's been to two Olympics on the national volleyball team in 76 in Montreal and in 84 in Los Angeles, and is toying with the idea of uh, checking out what it would take to be one of two expected men's teams to play beach volleyball in Atlanta. Well, he went with um, Brian Gatsky last year. The two of them went together and went in a tournament, and they won against all the top teams. You see, Brian Gatsky's right now in the top 25 in the American Pro Circuit. So if Garth Pischke was to team up with Brian Gatsky, I think there'd be a lot of beach volleyball players in this country are going to have to get out there and do a lot more practice. I just hope Garth doesn't have to defend this idea when he gets home. I'm not sure it's been sprouted with his family yet. But hey, you know, it'll keep, yeah. the, it'll keep the conversation going at dinner on Monday night. Well, there's a, um, a violation for reaching over the net before the attack had been completed. You know, when this score was 1-6, Manitoba had only a 30% passing average. You can see why the score was at that point 1-6. Well, the winner that time for Pichette. Oh, that was um, Rousseau. Sorry, Rousseau hit that one? Yeah, and what they tried to do is they tried to take Rousseau out of the play by, by going short on him, but it didn't seem to fizz him at all. Cron again came right down the middle and hammered the winner. Ken Cron really enjoying himself out there from Vincent Massey and Brandon. And there's a coach down there that does a fantastic job, Bill Gatt. Oh, tip shot's not going to do it, Vincent. The Manitoba team a little bit annoyed at the lack of a call from Guy Bradbury. They felt that uh, there had been an infraction. Well, Scott Koski is indicating that the Lavelle team was over interfering with his ability to make that set, and there's a good chance that Scott's right on that. He didn't win the argument. So maybe he was wrong. But take a look at Mr. Crush. I can't believe how well Crown's playing. Because last year, he was an outside hitter. Now, notice that time. He cut the ball back across his body. Uh, as um, one of the Manitoba players, I don't know which one, said, he said, if you give Kron a reasonably high ball in there and you've only got one blocker, he's going to go either way and he can get by them every single time. Four serving eight. Shet serve for Laval. Side out Manitoba. Cron back to put the ball in play for the Bisons. He's one of three players on this team playing in his final collegiate team. Today, Scott Koski and 
and Steve Welch, who did not start. The all-time leader in kills for the Bisons is the other one. Nice to have the, one of the best power hitters in the history of your program sitting on the bench as a spare part if you need him. Listen, that falls out of bounds. Steve was saying to me he enjoys that role. He said, Vic, I just have to sit back here. And he said, ride on the coattails of these guys. And if they need me, I'll come in and hit a few balls. <laughs> so Lavelle, according to our statistician, has been uh, going through so quite a bit more. 14, and he's responded with a 75% efficiency. Good job by Remyard to save the one. the ball over the net once again. That's twice he's been halfway back on the court and tried to hit a winner and buried the ball in the net. Well, they really rely on Bilodeau. Bilodeau has got to be tough. We've got a substitution coming up, Peter. Well, it's Francois LeBlanc on the floor and will take Bilodeau off for a second. He will not be out of the lineup for long. Side out Manitoba. Really? 8 here in game two after winning the first game 15 -10. That ball is hit and it's off the antenna and there's no touch on the block. Pascal Clement feels there might have been a touch on the block. He's trying to educate the referee on the play and the umpire rather. That argument either. So the officials lead in winning arguments by two to nothing here in this set. No, no question. They're gonna, they're, they will continue to win. It'll always be zero for the players. The, the referees are excellent that we have at these tournaments. Uh, Guy Bradbury is an international referee. They let the players play. They call it just the amount that you need to, particularly when you've got the experience of Guy Bradbury being an international referee. Laval's going to, number 14, Ghislaine Rousseau. Take a look at him. He's only six feet tall, and he's up, and he gets through. There wasn't much that Garrett Klein could do about it on that play, but that time it was Trevor Dimitri. Well, Rousseau, when I asked him what his strengths were, he said, well, defense and determination. Right now, it's offense. What versatility the Laval uh, team's got. A combination in behind, sometimes referred to as a tandem. So you had number 14, Russo, going in first and the back set, and then Remyard coming in over top of him. Villadeau back in, and Francois LeBlanc takes a seat on the bench. And Gislain Russo serves for Laval. 8 6 here in game number two. Job at the net that time by Garrett Cott of Manitoba. Side out the Bisons. Cott figures that one of his uh, key strengths is his focus. So he can focus that time. And he played it right off the hands. Sometimes it's important as you're making those hits that you not worry about the block. You don't try and hit around it, you try and hit through it. And that's exactly what Cott did. Jules Martins to serve now for Manitoba. Nice touch by Pichette. Great defense by the Bisons. The ball still in play. And a winner for Bilodeau. Well, you know, when you talk about, we've talked about the offense and the power of the Manitoba team. And yet Garth says, I feel our strengths are our defense. And you can take a look at that, those recoveries, and you can certainly see that they have that strong defense. But that is how you come back out of transition, which is exactly what Bilodeau did. Like they came back into the middle out of transition. You're not likely seeing Manitoba um, go to the middle out of their transition. We are to serve after getting the winner for Laval. Leading 9-6. And a point goes to the Rouge R. It's a carried ball called on Kasky. You're not going to see that very often. But this man is one tough server. I talked to Paul Gratton about, uh, you know, the keys on a spike serve because he was one of the best spike servers that Canada had ever had played on our national team. He said, toss it with two hands, toss it high so you can get your arms well back. 
for that um, full action. He's doing some agent work, I think, now out of Montreal, isn't he? He, out of Ottawa, and um, he is now a player's agent for uh, volleyball players who want to play in Europe. And there are eight members of the national team who are playing in Europe, I believe, right at the moment. Yeah, and one of those is Gino uh, Russo, who's playing in, um, in Japan. They're having a great time. Randy well, Ginger. Seven in Europe and one in Japan. Well, no, the Randy Ginger is in Japan, 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 Japan well. too, yeah. Anyway, they're playing overseas. <laughs> Taking some good money, playing a competitive level. Looking forward to coming back and trying to help the national team qualify for the Olympic Games. Take a look at the full arm swing there, and you just got the end of that arm swing on Remyar. Good job by God. Excellent work there by Jules Martin as Manitoba keeps the ball alive. Well, Jules Martin's doing a great job of defense back there. However, Laval prevails. Koski had, had a chance to save it, and Dimitrik buried the ball to the net. So it's side out now for Philado and Laval, leading 11-6 here in the second game of this best of five. Had the ball go off his body, and no teammate could get there in time to save it. Coming right down the line here. Good job by Remyard, but no one else could help. And no one could help. Well, right now, the Lavelle caught there either. Sorry. Lavelle's had 17 kills actually when I got that statistic, so that made it 18. That's high in kills. Pretty good set by Scott Koski, but Jarowski missed. Well, Andy, Zorowski, the line. Andy Zorowski's not normally hitting from the right side. I think that could have thrown him off a bit. We have a timeout on the floor. It's 12 6 Laval in game two, trying to get this match even. Go back to see if they can do it after this. The moment. You can feel it coming, and you're ready to make it your own. Mizuno, serious performance. Pascal Clement a little happier with the play of his team here in this second game. After losing the first one 15-10, they lead 12-6 in game two. Now normally we talk about teams get to 12, they got the easy part done. The last three is what makes a difference. But this Laval club, very experienced, very solid, very focused, and very determined to defend the title they won last year. So I don't think finishing is going to be a problem. The Manitoba Bisons, on the other hand, will be the problem because they're equally adept at closing out something that they get to 12. Big discussion here because in the uh, opinion of the Lavelle people, that ball was still on their side of the antenna. The umpire and referee are indicating. No, no, he never went on your back. Pascal Clement. Trying to educate the officials. Guy Bradbury having none of it. He's made his decision. Now, you had an example, Peter, right there to see what the big difference is right now. Manitoba served that ball. Lavelle made an absolutely perfect pass at the center. And right now, 76% of their passes are going right up to the center. Bergeron with a bad serve that time for Lavelle. Side out Manitoba. Trevor Dimitri to put the ball in play for the Bisons. And another big difference is uh, Manitoba has only had a couple of stops in this in this uh, game, and that's a big problem. There's a combination from Vincent Pichet, six feet tall. He credits uh, Pierre Landry, Michelle Paymont, Gino Brusso, and Michelle Cass. He, Michelle Cass is one of the people he feels he helped him. Kaz, the player of the year last year, is graduating now from Laval University. 
Playing in Europe? I think he's playing in Europe, isn't he? Yes, he is playing professional volleyball. But you see, that's the kind of guy that, that, that they love playing professional volleyball because he's got so much charisma. Well, so does Gino. He was a great player, Michelle Cos, for the Rouge AR. This is a program that's really come on in the last few years. They've won three of the last five national championships. Well, Ramiard getting through there because he had a one-on-one -on -one situation. Anytime you have that one-on-one, -on -one, you know that, that middle hitter for your team has held the blocker. And the reason he's held the blocker is because he can hit like that. Now, Billado, that time, didn't hit a quick one. He hit a delay. And so he just went in there and made, made a little fake. The blockers went up, then he went up and hit it. Great set by Francois Morin. Great job at the net by Bellado once again. He gets credit for a kill. And it's 13-7. Laval in game two. Manitoba won the first game, 15-10. We thought this might go a while. And it shows all of the trademarks of being a match that's going to take some time to decide. Side out Manitoba. Garrett Cock to serve. Ah, oh, Moran caught the Manitoba defense flat footed. Just dumped a little left handed winner into the court. And here's Vincent Pichette now trying to finish this out for Laval, leading 13 7. Two more points to win game one and tie the match. And Martins has something to say about all of this. Gar it's been almost unstoppable this week. Absolutely, and Gar said he is the heart of the team. I, like, when they're in trouble, Jules said, I want the ball. Just give it to me. And the, the thing is, when you can come out of the back row like that and make a play like that, you know it's the kind of guy you want to have on that team. First man is held in the middle, and that made it easy for Bergeron to hit a one-on-one -on -one and score. Bergeron is six feet. Scott Dostey was playing defense against him is 6'3. Bergeron was the winner that time. Good set by Moran. And a great job at the net by Andrew Zorowski once again. So you had a, an interesting matchup that time, Peter. It was one big guy was Zorowski. And of course, Bergeron was over on the right hand side. I don't think he's used to that exact position. set out of the backcourt that time by Bilodeau. He was directing traffic and making a great set at the same time. And a substitution here as Simone Noel comes onto the court for Laval. And Eric Bergeron will come to the bench for a break. Noel tore up his knee at the York tournament the first week in January, missed six weeks of the season, returned during the final series in Quebec against the University of Chicago. He's another one that when you can bring people of his quality off a bench and not have to start them, but bring them in in certain spots during a match, you know your program is solid and in very good shape indeed. We have a timeout on the floor called by Laval. Having trouble closing out this second game. They still lead it 13 to 9, but they need two more points to tie the match. One thing the new Geo Metro is not is important. In fact, it may be responsible for putting Ingersoll, Ontario, Canada on the map. The all-new Geo Metro. It's not a lot. One thing the new Geo Metro is not is apologetic. With ozone-friendly air conditioning and the best fuel economy in the country, at least it's trying. The all-new Geo Metro. It's not a lot. Pascal Clement calling for more of that energy that Vic Lindell talked about at the outset of our telecast. The Rouge Or having a little trouble nailing down this second game here. They led it by 12-7 at one point. It's 13-9 now for Laval. Remiard thought he had a winner. Great job in the backcourt by Koski. And the ball is rolled out. It was blocked at the net effectively by Laval, but when it came back across, it fell out of bounds. 
Statisticians have just given me a real significant statistic. Lavelle's passing 82% of their balls right to the center, just as you saw there. And you can see what happens if you pass it right to the center. Whereas Manitoba has only been putting 42% of their passes. Now that's where Manitoba broke down last year. Take a look at this. Right up and right through by Ramiro. Simone Noel, very patient uh, offensive attack by Laval. When, when I talked to um, Pascal Clement, he said that uh, Simone Noel is our joker, which is, of course, a card playing thing. That's their ace in the hole. The ball is out. And it's side out to Manitoba. It's 14 10. So. Val was leading 12-7 at one point. Manitoba's made a game out of it here in game two after winning the first game, 15-10. Good job. Little short set that time by Moran. The guy that's tearing up the back row is Pichette, number six. And he is passing 100% right now. And that you've got to like. Can't do it much better. Ball is in. Side out for Manitoba. Jules Martin hit the winner that time. And here's Steve Welch, the great veteran of the Manitoba program, coming on for Garrett Cott. There he is, the all-time leader in kills at the University of Manitoba. His university career started in 1988. After three years at Manitoba, he spent a couple of seasons with the national team in Calgary and then came back to school. Out of Gordon Bell Collegiate in Winnipeg, closing out a brilliant five-year career that's actually taken him through about seven years at the University of Manitoba. He's wearing number 11 in black. He'll be prominent if he's on the floor. Martins with the winner. Nothing that Moran could do about it. Side out Manitoba. Steve Wells worked perfectly there as a decoy because most people thought it would go to Wells. And, of course, Jules Martin standing over there and hitting it to the floor. That's the first bad pass by LaBelle, but that was me that came about because of Jules Martin's great serve. Camera five took a little bit of a spill, but he's okay. Side out, LaBelle. Leading 14-10, Gilbert Ramiard. Puts the ball in play. And we haven't heard from Kenny Cron, but he's been out there doing his thing. And he was prominent at that time. And here is Cott coming back in and Welch coming out for Manitoba. So Garrett Cott back to serve. His team trails by four. Statistic I just got, Billado right now is at six kills. Do they go to a new spot? Yes, they do. Take it seven. Oh, it's nice my statistician handed that to me, and right away they go to Bill O'Donnell. Timing is everything, isn't it? Here's a substitution for Laval now with Alexander Ima, a first-year phys ed student, number five coming on the floor. He'll take the place of Francois Moran for a few moments. His nickname was Big Guy. Play didn't uh, work quite as well as Laval would have liked. A little sloppy defensively. Side out here for Manitoba. And this is about the fifth one in a row. Nobody's scored a point here. It's just been exchange of serve. What do you see? shot is out. See, what Laval had done there is they had tried to get a little bit more power in the front row by taking uh, Francis Moran out and letting um, Pichette do the setting. Very creative strategy by Pascal Clement. Eamon comes out and Moran is back on the floor to set that shot. And Remiard got the winner. And it's 14 serving 11 here in game number two. Garth Pischke not happy about something. Maybe we can find out what it is. Possible that he 
thought the player was ahead of the three meter line on that attack. And that ball was called long. It means the second game goes to Laval, and it means the match is even. Manitoba won the first 15-10. Laval ties the match, winning game two, 15-11. Game three after this. Oh, please, oh, please, just tell me this once. Oh. Next time, get a dependable interstate battery. We check them before you buy them for fresh power. Guaranteed. The moment. You can feel it coming. Stronger companies to represent them in negotiating the properties. Coldwell Banker, support you can count on. Volleyball, of course, is a team game, but there was time on Thursday night to salute some outstanding individual achievements during the 94 95 season. Time as well to hear from a longtime volleyball coach in BC, our own Vic Lindell. It takes 11 positives to equal one negative. So if somebody comes up with an idea, I will performer says, well, let's look at that. Let's see what we can do. Because if it takes 11 positives to equal one negative, all you need to do is go, that'll never work. And now you've got to come up with 11 positives. First year Dalhousie Tiger Terry Martin was singled out as the CIAU's Rookie of the Year. A 17 year old from Nelson High School in Burlington, Ontario is a rising star in this sport. A former star as a player and a two time Olympian for Canada was singled out as the Coach of the Year. Garth Pischke has guided the Manitoba Bisons to an incredible 44 and 1 record this season. And the player of the year is a two-time All-Canadian himself who wraps up his own collegiate career by going after his second national championship. He's strong in the classroom, a force on the court, and a solid contributor in his community, which earned him the TSN award and a check for $2,500. Uh, I think it's a great honor, and it's something that, uh, that every student athlete strives for is, is to try to maintain a balance between their uh, academic, athletic, and uh, community achievements. Uh, uh, by acknowledging this, uh, I think TSN is doing a great job in uh, recognizing that the CIAU produces not only top athletes, but, but top students and top people. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the coaching, coaching staff of uh, my team over at the University of Manitoba, uh, my teammates, parents, family, supporters, for all their support over the five years. Three excellent examples of why Canadian University Volleyball is in good shape. Terry Martin at Dalhousie, Garth Pischke and Scott Kosky at the University of Manitoba. And play is underway here in game three. The match even at a game each. And just as we came out of that, we had a great shot of the Manitoba cheering section. You've got Mr. and Mrs. Dimitri up there, Mr. and Mrs. Martins up there, Mrs. Kosky and Scott's younger brother, and Mr. and Mrs. Cott. So they're here cheering on their team from Manitoba. The boys are playing well, so the families get a few trips, in, don't you think? It's always the case. I mean, the families have, have got to get some extra part out of it with all of the work they've been putting in. Stop that if you will, and Ken Cron couldn't, not because he didn't try, but because it was a powerful shot off the hand of Gilbert Remiard. We well, got to like Remiard. He went up against a three-man Manitoba block and still got it by. There he is again. That time, Cron got to it. Caught. Buried it in the net. Good job by Remiard just to make sure the ball wasn't going to fall into the Laval court for a winner. It's 2-1 Laval lead. You see why Ken Cron is number two on their team this year. Four digs behind Koski. That time Martin's got his hand on the ball and knocked it into the Laval court for a winner. Well, Manitoba decided they're going to put three of their big guys over there on Remyard and see if he can get through. So Remy already decided to go to the other side that time, and he did get through. That ball is long from Remy Ard. And the, man, the 
the uh, game even at two. We're in game three of this best of five. CIAU Men's Volleyball Championship. Andrew Zorowski puts the ball in play for Manitoba. Saved by a great defense by the Bisons. And a winner once again for Remyard. That's about four, I think, here in this first game. In this uh, third game, rather. Well, caught let up a little bit on that. You gotta hit it hard. Now, Billy Doe does get excited. I asked his father, Lionel, I said, where does he get it from? He says, well, I'm pretty emotional too. He says, I get pretty intense. And he used to play, play a lot of hockey and play a lot of sports. Billy Doe family from Valdor, Quebec. This is a four and a half hour drive east of Sudbury. It's actually closer for them to come here than it has been to go to Montreal or Quebec City to watch their son play. And he had a winner. Good defense by Manitoba. And that time, Moraz said it, but he said it too high for Bellado, and it was no backup. So side out Manitoba. Threes on the board. So what we've got happening here is that Bellado just was not up fast enough. See, Bellado has to be up for the quick hit, and we've got an out of rotation call. A bell is called out of position. So it might be a little complicated to explain that, but uh, you must be able to be in your serving rotation when the ball is touched by the server and the opposing team. Side out Laval. Four, three. All of these players have to be in the proper rotational order at the time the ball is caught. Ken Cron is showing me a lot more than he showed us earlier in this tournament because right there he hit a quick hit that was a good uh, 10 or 15 feet away from the center. So he's hit them close to the center and he's hit them away from the center and he's hit them quick as opposed to earlier where he was hitting them higher and slower. Martin's got a piece of it but couldn't save it. Side out Laval, 4-3 for the Rouge Or. Game three, match even at a game each. Opportunity to look at Jules Martins attempting that dig. Jules is going to step up there. He said, I'm the center. I'm going to give it to Cron. Once again, Bellado tried to hit the winner out of the backcourt and couldn't do it. There was an absolutely great defense on Lavelle. You take a look at the recovery. The first one's recovered, the next one's recovered, and Billado really is, uh, I'm sure, a little bit depressed because after you get saves like that, I'm telling you, you expect your hitter to hit it in and hit it hard. Remiar, number four, has really been a force for Laval in this third game. Very effective from the outside. And there's Kenny Cron once again. A recurring storyline to this match. In the middle, hits the winner, goes back to serve. Three serving four oh, in that, game three. That was incredible because you see he did, he showed us one more shot. Did a little stutter step, which drilled the blocker on the outside and then stepped in and hit it. Now for a fellow that has just been converted to a middle hitter, he's actually giving us a clinic out there on how to play the middle. It's hard. Trevor Dimitrik that time. Scott Koski back to serve, so lots of side outs and not much scoring here as these two teams battle in game three. Dimitrik uh, says that somebody that influenced his career was Jim Schreier. Art Pischke has been coaching him since juvenile to juvenile. And of course, on the license team. A winner for Laval, side out to the Rouge Or. Remember, they, they wanted to be known as the team from the village of Lavuala. Good block at the net once again. That time, Villado and Remy are together and denied Manitoba a chance to return the ball. 
all even at four here in game three. And a big change, Manitoba now passing 80% of their balls up to the center. Take a look at the score, They're right there. That's not quite up there, Andy. And you don't get it quite up there. That ball is out. It's ruled in. Point for Laval, 5-4. Take a look at it. Ramiar with great form. The only thing is that Ramiar is going to have to watch. He's coming down on one leg, and he could end up with some knee problems. Young, young players out there need to be very careful on their landing to come down and land on both feet and land softly. Many of our coaches sometimes miss the point of people landing on one leg, and we end up with serious knee problems. And that was Koski making that dig, and Koski's a leader in digs for their team this year. Well, that time it was Pichette and Villadeau for Laval. Great point for the Rouge or. Well, Pichette, when, he, when we asked him what his strengths were, he said it was intensity, and defense, versatility. So he wants to receive 50% of the balls when he's in that back row. That was a great combination with Hot coming around. And so that's a combination that uh, Manitoba hasn't shown us. So you take a look, the first man is out, Dimitri's outside, and then Cot comes around and hits what we refer to as a 53. And a step around by Pelado. Second one of those that I can remember in this match that he has been effective on. Explain the 53 for those who... 53 means it's right directly in front of the setter, which we call the five position, and it's about three feet in the air. This uh, numbering system was originally devised by net violation on Manitoba. Originally devised by Val Keller, who was then the U.S. national men's coach. And he'd been watching all these Japanese do all these combinations. So he's like, I gotta have some way to explain it so that the, the language will be the same. So he designed a numbering system. Controversy here. Uh, Martins took exception to some contact by Eric Bergeron. Both teams represented in front of Guy Bradbury for a little admonition that you will play, gentlemen, but we don't need any uh, gestures or chatter or miscellaneous physical contact. Well, Ken Kwan. Ken Kwan doing a great job, but what's really interesting about Kron, besides his ability to come up with Mr. Crush, he is leading right now on digs, and he's also had three kills. So you see you got the man there that's doing a job in the front row as an attacker, but you know he prides himself on great defense, and he's had four digs already in this set. 7-5 Laval, but Manitoba they scored the last couple of points, both on winners by Kron. They couldn't save that one. Villado has a really interesting uh, way in which he hits this. He actually lets the ball get a little bit behind him and then hits it. And that sometimes has the blockers even going down before he hits it. Now, I'm not sure if he's doing that on purpose or not, but if he is, that's even more impressive. Three in a row for Kron. So Bilodeau and Kron are having um, a nice little duel at the net. Eric Cox serves for Manitoba, trailing 5-7 in game three. And despite an excellent effort by Pichette, Laval cannot save that one. Six serving seven. So we can take a look here. Kron gets caught in the middle, and Koski has to do it all by himself. Well, if you're six foot three and you've been playing as many years as Koski has, you can anticipate. You know, blocking Peter is so much anticipating. You watch the player. What did he do last time? Watch his eyes, watch his shoulders. And then you're just playing a, a, a game of anticipation. Another winner for Kron. I think that's four in a row. Well, Kron says, I'll take that one. 
even though it wasn't pretty, but the big thing is he was up there, and if you're up there, you can hit it, even though the set isn't right up as high as your hand is. Remember I had a player when, um, when we were first teaching this years ago, Mike Rockwell, he'd get the ball, and sometimes it was set around his shoulder, but he'd still get it over. Other guys would say to the setter, oh, set it higher. The key is, no matter where it's set, hitters, you've got to hit it over. Side out Manitoba. Nobody scored a point here for about four exchanges. 7-6, Laval leads in game three. Match even at a game each. Side out Laval. And because we've got a great side out game, and because this score is so tight, you can also take a look at the statistics. Manitoba's passing at about 80%, and Laval's passing at about 76%. And if you pass well, you can get great side outs. Bellado once again gets the kill. Bellado coming in again and pounding it right off the hands. The blocker's got to recognize that when Bellado comes in there, he's quick. They've got to go up at the same time as he goes up. And Martins had his chest underneath the net. Well, the chest was okay, but um, uh, Mokler uh, indicated that he had his toes too far over. So nine serving six here, Laval. And Garth Pischke says, I need a timeout. I don't like the trend here. I don't like what I'm seeing. I want to talk to my players. So Laval leads nine six in game three. The match even at one. And we'll have more volleyball for you from Sudbury after this. One thing that Jean-Luc Broussard, Canadian Olympic gold medalist. To win gold, you've got to want it. So I push myself to do my personal best. That leaves my hair sweaty and out of control. So I reach for Perk Plus. I've tried some other two-in-ones, but Perk Plus works. I get the control I want. Perk Plus has control-enhancing conditioners that help smooth every strand to leave your hair more manageable. With Perk Plus, I don't fuss. I get hair that I can control. A winning combination for manageable hair. You want to be your best? You gotta have control. Stoiko goes for the big one and gets the jump on taste. The taste of McCain frozen punch. Year-round thirst quenching tastes like grape. Orange and McCain fruit punch. Made with real fruit juices for real fruit taste. That makes McCain the punch of champions like Elvis Stoiko. Get the jump on taste. The real fruit taste of McCain frozen punch. Go for McCain. Get the jump on taste. Back with you at uh, Laurentian University in Sudbury. Under Watson, Vic Lindell. This is the CIAU men's volleyball final. Manitoba in black against Laval in the red and gold. And the ball is awarded to Manitoba. A point to the Bisons, in fact, trailing 9-7. So Vincent Pichette would love to have felt that it touched the blockers, but I think looking on the replay, it really touched the net and not the ball. Uh, Remy Art is leading in attacks. When I had the statistics a minute ago, he had six kills. That brings him up to seven. So he's the man that Manitoba is going to have to stop. He's been really effective here in game number three. He puts the ball in play for Laval, leading 9-7. Ken Cron just was in the passing rotation. Last year he didn't pass very well, but he just made a perfect pass there to keep them in the game. I think that Bilodeau was called for a net violation. Well, also, there was uh, a little tangle at the net. Bilodeau came down on Jules Martin's foot. And that, that's possible. You're allowed to have your foot over the, the, the line. You just can't have it all the way over the line. So there will be the odd occasion when you'll come down on somebody else's foot. Remy Yard again. Exactly. And Remy Yard coming out of that back row. And one of the things I was indicating, remember I said that uh, Paul Gratton said they have to be faster. Well, that was clearly a fast shot out of the back row. Well, Bellado blocked it, but Remy Yard couldn't get out of the back row quickly enough to save that ball. So side out Manitoba trailing 7-9 here in game three. 
caught just doing a half speeder that got that in. That's kind of one of the things you pick up on the beach. Jules Martins to serve. That ball is long. Side out, love out. It's been a struggle, this match very much in doubt at this point. Manitoba won the first game 15-10. Val won the second game 15-11. Val's pretty much led on the board here in game three, but they certainly haven't got the game in hand by any stretch of the imagination. Remember we indicated that Remyard had, was leading in kills. He's also been passing 11 out of the 18 serves. So he's doing a job in the back row as a service reception passer. Now we have a uh, pause on the court as Guy Bradbury asks for Francois Bilodeau, the team captain of the Val, to come over and discuss something. Jared Cott to serve for Manitoba. And once again, little Eric Bergeron, I say little, he's six feet. But by the standards of uh, Manitoba in particular, he's a small man, and he hit a winner that time. I was talking to Tony Crabb, who was an assistant coach with the U.S. national men's team at the World Championship, where the U.S. men's team picked up a bronze medal. I said, what did you notice? What was significant? He said, Vic, there's still a place in the game for the six-foot player. I said, at the World Championship? He said, yes. So six-foot players take heart. The six-foot player just hit another winner, side of Laval. Nine serving seven. If you run it fast enough, the six-foot player can stay in there very easily. So Andrew Zaroski coming inside. And Mr. Koski up on a one-on-one -on -one block. Koski pretty happy. Remy Yard just very calm about the whole thing. Service reception on Laval is going up They're right now at 82%. And Martins with the great block at the net. Credit for the winner. And finally, Manitoba gets a point, trailing 9-8. So Manitoba managing to get two blockers in there. Good try by Bilodo to save that ball. Just could not do it. Wiped a little moisture off the court. And we're ready to play. Scott Koski to serve for Manitoba. Manitoba's Andrew Zorowski, number 11, and Trevor Dimitrik, number three. Well, you had the, the two of them closing. You even had a third player coming across there, Jules Martins. And I think that showed good presence of mind on Jules to decide, look, I'm going to get over there and give him a hand on three blocking. Bichette would like that shot back. And for the first time in game three, Manitoba has the lead at 10 to 9. Oski to serve. Come on. So they changed their service reception around slightly that time and uh, took uh, Remyard out of the, the service reception rotation uh, to give Manitoba a little different look and also give Remyard a better opportunity to hit it, although they didn't set him. They gave him a better opportunity to hit it by not being in the service reception rotation. So taking a look, there you get another little six-footer. Bichette putting that block up. All even at 10. <laughs> Martins got the winner that time. Rota Bilodeau tried hard to block it. Only got a piece of it. Side out Manitoba. Andrew Zorowski. I, yes, I asked Jules what he does before the game. He says, I visualize the other team's power hitters. I visualize their tendencies. I see myself blocking it. And I pray for success for myself and our team. Off a Manitoba player, side out the foul. So Bilodeau up front there taking a look over. They're taking a look and indicating there's only going to be two hitters this time. It's going to be a free ball coming up for Lavelle. And they made it a winner. Now, Peter, I'm going to tell you that was a 31, so that was on the three position, which is about 10 or 15 feet away from the setter. And the whole idea is that the hitter has to be in the air, and you can see him. He's in the air, 
before the ball is set to him, which means that the blocker must block at the same time as he is. We've got a substitution, Peter. Ryan Ratushniak, number 12 on the court for Manitoba. Andrew Zorowski will take a seat beside Garth Pischke and perhaps listen to a little advice before going back out. There's Bellado once again with a winner. Ryan Ratushniak wanted us to say hi to his girlfriend Jackie and his parents back home. We didn't know if he'd get in, but he's in there now playing in the back row. A reminder to stay with us after the match for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you today by the good folks at Interstate Batteries. We check them before you buy them for fresh power guaranteed. You know, an apple sitting around too long it goes bad. It's the same thing with a new battery. It loses power waiting to be bought. That's why at Interstate, we're constantly checking our batteries to make sure they're fresh so that you don't end up with a bad apple. We're at the National Men's Volleyball Championships. A little ice fishing going on outside. Still very much winter here in Northern Ontario. And speaking of ice, let's get all swept up in the Labatt Briar. Prince Edward Island, Robert Campbell against Alberta, Kevin Martin. Campbell struggled a little bit against Ed Wernick I saw yesterday, and Martin lost to the Northwest Territories rink in draw number two last night. So they'll do battle in the Briar. That follows us here from Halifax. Crowder and all of his friends on hand doing their usual fine job in a great event, the Labatt Friar. Meantime, the National Men's Volleyball Championships continue in Sudbury. And a winner hit by Manitoba. Laval leads 12 10 here in game three. The match even at a game each. Right now, Manitoba with a good size front row. Kron's up there, Cots up there, and Jules Martin. <laughs> Good job by Dimitri to save that for Manitoba. Martin's got the winner. Went against Pichet and Bilodeau and won the battle. Martins just enjoys himself up there. And look at how far back his arms were on that backswing. Well, Bilodeau going up against Krom. Bilodeau cutting the ball back. You got a one-on-one -on -one block. You just got to figure out which way you're going to cut it. In that case, you cut it and picked up part of the block. It really throws your defense off. Braun again. Quieter in the latter stages of game three, but still very much a presence in that Manitoba lineup. The 11 serving 12. Jules Martins to serve for Manitoba. Ooh, Vincent Pichette with a perfect pass. And out of the back row, Ramiard out of bounds. And a point for Manitoba. Game even at 12. Match even at 1. Can't get much closer than that. Laval had 78% uh, serve reception right now. And Manitoba is down. They're only 48% of their balls up. Although the score is tight and it is close, Laval passing a lot better. Makes it a lot easier to get those side outs. Ramiard the winner. Bilodeau to serve. 12-12 in game three. I was going to indicate this is a tough position for Lavelle to be in because they have a shorter front row. Moran deciding to take a long bat set. Remyard, but Manitoba having scouted them well, knew exactly where it was going. Zorowski ready to check back into the lineup for Manitoba. And Ryan Ratushniak will come out. Well, Ryan credits Jim Harrison for a lot of his intensities at Harrison, taught him visualization, and the value of hard work. Jim Harrison, a famous volleyball coach in the high school system in Manitoba. Well, Remyard is coming out of everywhere to hit every single ball. And Vincent Pichette right now, he's passed eight out of the last nine balls. The 88% in passing, certain reception. Remyard once again got the winner. 13-12, Laval. Good, uh, just some great examples. You had a non-setter setting it. He set it high to the outside, just off the net. Big thing is Remyard went at it and hit it hard. 
Mr. Crash coming through. Now, he had a very disappointing Nationals last year, but he can sure be proud of what's happening right out there this year. Closing out a five-year career at Manitoba on a fine note, Ken Cron. Good save that time by Martins, who's up to hit the winner and gets it. Well, he's getting a big hug, too, from Koski. Koski out there is the leader. Gar says Koski keeps them all happy. Now, when you got that many hitters, you got to set them all, so you got to keep them all happy. Saved by Martins. He's more than just a hitter. Plays some defense, too. Kowalski got the winner that time. And Manitoba within a point of taking the lead in this match, leading 14-13 with Braun to serve and a timeout on the floor called by the Laval Rouge or. Well, Zorowski had to go back really and thank Jules Martins for that recovery because it was Martins that came up and picked up that dig that allowed Zorowski to hit the ball down. I understood the last part. He said, let's go, boys. Down by a point here in game three. This is the fifth meeting of the season between these two teams. The first was at the Sherbrooke tournament last November. The second was in the final of the same tournament. Then they played at the York tournament in early January and at the Winnipeg tournament in mid-January. And Manitoba won all four matches, two by three nothing and two by three to two. So they are familiar foes. Well, Bergeron says that he focuses on his opponents before the game and he listens to music for his concentration. Andy Zorowski, he thinks about the other team. He relaxes before the game, takes a deep breath, and walks out there. Oh boy, old Andy just took a deep breath and pounded that one to the floor. Koski to serve from Manitoba. Well, the Bisons were able to save it. it. Wasn't pretty, but they got it over the net. And they couldn't do a thing about Pichette that time. Side out, Laval. You gotta love Jules Martins because he went in and he, he played it perfectly off the net. When you're in there tight like that, you have to watch, because sometimes it'll come straight down, but Jules Martin's timed that well. Russo serves for foul. Martins tried to hit the winner and couldn't. Great save by the Rouge R. And I think they got the ball in play. A point for Laval. All even at 14. Great. Job at the net by the Rouge Or. That has to be one of the great saves by Rousseau, who was playing the center back position that time. That ball was on the floor. Take a look at the ball. It's long. See, the amazing thing is after you get a few blocks up there, pretty soon the, the, the offense gets a little intimidated. They're leaving Jules Martins out to play on the left side now. Andy Zorowski's playing on the right side. Jules Martin's coming around in a combination. That is a huge kill for Manitoba. Trailing by a point with the game on the line and the match even at one and the little come around made a difference for Manitoba side out by And just like that the ball goes back over and Remyard who's been the key performer as far as I'm concerned for Laval here in game three Vic was terrific on that play. No question about it. He's had uh, well, he had 11 kills earlier. I think he must be about 12 or 13 now. Big time substitution coming up right now. They're taking the setter out, Moran. It's coming out of the game. And putting Alexandra Imon, first year phys ed student, on the floor. He wears number five. And Laval has got the point that has made the difference in game three. Will history repeat itself? Laval won in four last year. They now lead two games to one in the 95 championship finale. 16-14, the score in game three.
can feel it coming. And you're ready to make it your own. Mizuno. Serious performance. One thing the new Geo Metro is not is a bus. It stops and goes when you want to. You only let in people you like. And it smells better. The all new Geo Metro. It's not a lot. One thing the new Geo Metro is not is a toy. There's no assembly required, and the battery is included. The all new Geo Metro. It's not a lot. In the world of sports, only the Olympics are bigger. This summer, Canada's best student athletes are going to the World University Games, and you can be part of it. Call and order your replica Team Canada tracksuit. You'll be supporting our athletes and helping us show the world the class of 95. Time to wrap up a busy weekend of university sports. Congratulations to the Alberta Pandas and to Laval. Both teams in the final for the first time in women's volleyball, and Alberta prevailed in four games out in Edmonton on Saturday. Manitoba beat Winnipeg to win the bronze medal. In basketball action, congratulations to the Victoria Vikettes and Kathy Shields in two games. Victoria and UBC split. A final just in, Victoria won over UBC 71-69 in overtime, so the Vikettes head for Thunder Bay. Sylvia Sweeney and I will have the final for you next Sunday from Lakehead University. In men's basketball in Canada West, Alberta and Victoria split the first two games, and they're on court in game three as we speak. The series tied at one. They're playing at the University of Victoria. In hockey action, Canada West, Calgary, which eliminated defending national champion Lethbridge a week ago, put down Manitoba 7-2 in a uh, final game of that uh, series. Moncton surprised Acadia right in Wolfville winning that series. And in the OUAA, Western and Guelph have advanced to the next round. In fact, they're both going to the Nationals in, the, uh, in Toronto, which are next weekend, and which Paul Romanuk, among others, will bring to you here on TSN. Right now, our story is volleyball action at Laurentian University in Sudbury. Laval University trying to defend the title at one over Manitoba last year. Leads in this year's finale two games to one as we're ready for game four. Guy Bradbury blows the whistle. He's the man in charge. And it will be Eric Bergeron to serve for the Rouge et Or to start game four. Statistics in that last match, number five, Ken Cron. He led in everything for Manitoba. He had 11 kills, he had four snuffs, he had five digs, and he had a 49% passing. And he's off again on his kills. Now, on the Lavelle team, number four, Ramiard had 12 kills. So a big matchup between Ramiard and Cron. Jules Martins to put the ball in play now for Laval. Good job at the net by Pichette that time. Martins not near as much of a factor, Vic, in game three as he was earlier. They've really blocked effectively against him. Well, the other thing, too, is that uh, Laval had changed their rotation around a little bit, just get a little diff different matchups. And it worked. But you no sooner say that, you got the guy back in there hitting the ball just as hard as before. The big question in this game is, uh, will Ramiard be able to be hitting as hard as the game progresses? Because when you have that many kills going, whereas I know Ken Cron's going to be able to continue to hit it hard, he looks in great shape. He's got real sore knees, though. Russo to put the ball in play for Laval. And a great block at the net once again. Pichette and Villador are there. You talk about energy on this Laval team, it is in high gear right now. So the two of them were there, both lined up, and both coming down with very soft landings. Russo, a quietly effective player, six feet tall, Garth Pischke said he is the best six foot middle blocker he's ever seen. That's a nice accolade from Garth Pischke. Good 
block at the net. The rotation really works well for Manitoba. Koski and Fraun got in the way of that shot by Villado. I like you know, side out Manitoba. Remember you said earlier, Fraun has uh, gone into the middle. Big change, but boy, he loves that blocking. A winner, I believe, for Zurowski, number 11. Point to the Bisons, first to game four. They trail three to one. We'll see Kant looking over the bench to Garth Pischke to see where it's to be served. Garth just deciding to go on a short serve. See, what the, um, many of the coaches do is they, they send in the signal as to where they want the serve to go. In that case, Garth is signaling he wanted short serve to take one of the Laval players out of the hitting rotation. Remyard serves for Laval. Leading 3-1 in game four. Leading in the match two games to one. Good defense uh, saved that ball by the Rouge R, but couldn't do a thing about Ken Cron in the middle. Ken Cron says before the game he does some visualization, thinks about his matchup. And he said he'd really like to thank his family for all the support he's given him over the years. Great job defensively by Martins to save that one. Bichette calls off his teammates and sets it up, and Villadol can't bury it. Well, uh, an interesting discussion here because uh, Lavelle felt that on that block, Manitoba come down and touched the net. Now, the question is, they may have touched the net, but was the ball already on the floor? Two serving three. <laughs> Remyard that time converted the winner, not right up at the net. He was a little way back from it, perhaps eight feet or so. Well, Rem, Rem, don't forget, Remyard's coming out of the back row, too, so the fact that he was still eight feet off the net's pretty good. Joel's Martin out of the back row, but Bilodeau with the block. He's amazing. Francois Bilodeau, second year communication student from Val d'Or, wears number 13. He's done that the whole day. He comes over and uses what's called a swing block. It's a dangerous kind of block where you come over and swing your arms up and then come in on the block, but it allows you to get a little bit higher. And if you get your timing on it, it can be a very effective blocking technique. Remy missed that completely. He really didn't react as well as he would have liked. There, he reacted pretty good that time on the last play as they get another winner, that time by Bergeron. Vincent Pichette looked over at him and started to laugh. He said, what in heaven's name were you trying to accomplish with that research? He did not get an answer, at least not one that I could see. Down the middle, Martins tried to hit the winner. Good defense by Laval. So that's going to be a free ball, and Martins going to take it to Zorowski. Zorowski getting it off the block and on the antenna. Love talking with Moran, the setter, because he really thinks about the game. Said Mauricio, one of his heroes, the setter for Brazil. And also Fabiani, a great setter for France. He didn't set that one very well. Well. Or his teammates didn't react very well to it. I think that's what I'd prefer to say. Any, uh, in any event, it's a point for Manitoba. They trail 4-3 here in game four. And a touch ball. No, it was not. It was ruled out. A point for Manitoba. So game four is even at four. And Zorowski back to serve for the Bisons. And I think Bilodeau is getting a little bit tired. Good block at the net. Caught, tried to hit the winner. And Russo denied him an opportunity. Side out Laval. Francis. Francois Morin to serve for the Rouge Or. You like a left hander on that X play, and Jules Martin showing why he can hit out of the back row, out of the front row, and he comes around, Dimitri goes up, and Jules comes around and hits the second man in for the X. The only way you can stop that is you have to have the left front go up with a quick hitter and the middle blocker go up with the second man around. And what we're also noticing is very often at this university level, they're setting the second man, so you better be planning to stop him. And there's a combination coming with Remyard, and again, they set the second man. 
It's effective if you've been setting the first man, and which they have been on their, their individual plays, but on the combinations, they tend to set the second man. All even at five, because Manitoba couldn't keep that ball in play. And it's Eric Bergeron back to serve once again for the foul. Again, the storyline coming in was the size of Manitoba against the energy level of the foul. Energy has prevailed, but height helped a little bit there. As Martins hit the winner, side out for Manitoba. Laval beat Manitoba three games to one last year in the championship. Leads two games to one here in this year's final. Jules Martins coming up with one of his beat shots, that little over shot. And, and Jules letting that ball go out of bounds. Right now, number six for Laval. Pichette is passing 95%, putting that ball right up to the set. Gets an A in uh, cleaning as well. They got a little bit of moisture off the floor there. Villado and Pichette teamed up. To... Yeah, Pichette also is getting 50% of the service receptions. So that's why they tried to keep it away from him that time. Pichette was over on the, the left back position, number five. Jules Martins decided to go cross court, just out of bounds. A rare lead for Manitoba, 6-5 here in game four. Rousseau to serve for Laval. Oh. Time he's jumped the way he wanted to and had to just swat it over the net. And there's Villadeau with a soft lob into the court for a winner. Manitoba never really got in sync on service reception that time. They got the ball back over the net, but not with any great sort of style points. Somebody indicated that one of the things that could happen here at Lavelle, because the players could only go back a certain distance, they can't go back the full 10 meters because this is a short gym, could help the, the uh, Manitoba team. See, if you go back further, you get an excellent float out of it. And, well, that time it was passed perfectly. Braun, the winner again. Well, Moran uh, made an unbelievable attempt at that and almost got it up. Good save by Dimitri. And the block that time as Pichette went up against Kron and Koski and lost the battle. And Laval, it's all even at seven. Laval's going to have to get a better game out of Pichette because he just let up a little bit there. He's got to go a little higher off the blocker's hands. And he's got somebody that tall. You can't be trying to hit it down. You've got to be trying to hit it off the hands and off the end wall. Side out Laval, Remiar to serve. Villado with the latest winner. Winner? He's had a lot of them in this match. When you said winter there, I was thinking of that ice fishing again, Peter. That is something we don't see a lot of in Victoria. No, you don't. And speaking of Victoria, I see that they just won a basketball game. Absolutely, Kathy Shields and company. <laughs> An impressive list of weekend winners in CIU sport. Busy time of the season with finals in volleyball for men and women, basketball for men and women, men's hockey. Manitoba's only passing at 60% right now. You really got to be passing at 75 or 80 percent. But if you can serve like that, I guess your passing doesn't have to be that great. Pascal Clement calls a timeout on the floor. 9-7 Manitoba in game four. Back with more volleyball from Sudbury after this. Everyone knows Canadian universities are world class, but not just in the classroom. <laughs> This summer, Canada's best student athletes go to the World University Games. You can be part of it. Call and order your Replica Team Canada cap and shirt. You'll be supporting our athletes and helping us show the world the class of 95. You gotta get up quick. If you get up quick on the step, you'll get the block. He's gonna hit it back in the seam, and if you're up quick on him, you'll get him. Okay, he hits it quick. He hits it quick. 
Okay. Here we go. Oh, Watch for that. Yeah. Come on, boys. Point now. Let's go. Two. Here we go. Well, Manitoba needs to make hay while the sun shine, and that means that Remyard's out of the front row, which is uh, somewhat of a relief, I think, to the Bison blockers. The concern has to be that Francois Bilodeau is still very much a part of the offense. And Garth had said, watch out for Bilodeau's pump, which is what some people refer to as a one-man tandem. He fakes it, there's no pump there. But Pichette is going to have to get through that block somehow, or he's gonna have to be replaced, and it looks like Replacement might be in the order. Now, he hasn't been playing well in the front row, but wow, has he been playing well in the back row. Give him a little break, see if he can come back in and hit in the front row. Only two hitters here right now. Good chance to go to Ramiard, but they take Ramiard out of the play. But they leave Villado in, and that's more than enough offense for most teams. But you notice that in order to take Ramiard out of the play, they served it short to make him come up and play the ball ahead of the three meter line. If he's gonna attack, then he's gotta get back behind the three meter line. Well, that's what happens when you're a substitute and not quite into it. Imon, he was originally at the University of Montreal, but their program folded, so he moved to Laval. Good save by Kron. job by Bellado. He's been a three-time tournament all-star this year, and he's working on MVP honors in this tournament, and right now would have the inside track. No question about that. He got up there and made an incredible block, but you certainly have to give some credit to number 14, Russo, for a great yeah. in that back row. Good try by Morab, but he cannot save that one. It bounced out to behind the Laval bench. Lavelle is very effective, Peter, on what we call a soft block. Instead of trying to block the ball straight to the floor, they block it up to their own team, which means your back row has got to be very, very alert. Ball rolled out. What a jump by Bergeron. He got a long way up in the air to try and hit the winner. 11-7 Manitoba. And the Bisons, who trail two games to one here, need four more points to force a fifth and deciding game in this match. Illido out of the back row. And once again, Bergeron is denied by a great block by Trevor Dimitri. Here is Simone Noel coming out of the floor for Laval. Bergeron will come out. Well, the stuff blocking of Manitoba is starting to tell. When you've got these six foot outside hitters, and you've got six foot six blockers against them. It starts to tell. Tip ball by Manitoba, so it's side out Laval. There's that soft block again. The interesting thing though, when that when you're hitting that soft block, if Moran is up too far because he's ready to come out and set. Um, he's going to have to stay back further, so Manitoba's being very clever when they're hitting off the block. They're hitting it deep into zone one. Off the block at the net, the point for Manitoba, 13 to 7. If you've joined us looking for the Labatt Briar, Prince Edward Island's Robert Campbell against Alberta's Kevin Martin is coming up as soon as we are finished with volleyball here in Sudbury. So enjoy a little bonus coverage of volleyball and please stay with us for curling, which follows immediately after we're finished here. Pichette back on the floor for Laval. As Alexander Imon takes a seat on the Laval bench. And there is Simone Noel with the winner for Laval. And that's what uh, Pascal Clement said. He said, this could be my ace in the hole. And you just saw him come in and make an incredible quick hit on the right side. Run, Mr. Crutch. I don't know what he's got in that right arm. Take a look. He looks like the bionic man. Look at the power in this shot. But the big thing was, he did a stutter step. He faked him on the outside, drew the blocker, and went in and hit the ball right to the floor all by himself. If so you want to pick up anything for your coaching book, take a look at some of the moves of Ken Cron, and take a look at that guy being converted from an outside hitter to a middle hitter. Timeout on the 
court. The Manitoba people are smiling. Pascal Clement is a little bit concerned, and he has a right to be. Manitoba within a point of tying the match. Snack and tap, snack and tap. Snack Looks like a job for Captain Nibbler. Packs of five singles to McKenzie's Nibbler's good for you. Zap that snack attack, everyone agrees. Nothing tastes quite like real cheese. Your whole family will love the delicious, nutritious taste of McCain Cheese Nibblers, the satisfying snack that comes in all their favorite varieties. Zap that snack attack, pick a pack today. McCain Cheese Nibblers, what do you say? Zap that snack attack. There is a member of the 2000, and let me quickly figure this out. I think it's 2014 Olympic team, possibly. Good crowds here all week. Not a very big gym, very small, only seats about 800. But the people of Sudbury, and especially the university community around the region, have really supported this tournament very well. There's a full gym here tonight. And their team finished eighth in the tournament and was out of it after a, a very good start against Manitoba Friday. They lost to three, but they played very well. But then quickly, uh, that was about as much as they were able to accomplish this weekend. And as they panned across there, we even had a picture of the president of the university, Ross Paul. He entertained us the other night at his house and even entertained us by playing the piano. Did you sing? No, I just listened. I'm a very good listener. And that ball is not over. So we're getting a little tighter here now. Point for Laval, trailing 14-8. Russo serves. Game four. And side out for Manitoba as Cron gets credit for another winner. Well, Ken Cron's had eight kills right now, and depending on how they're keeping the stats, they could give him a kill for that. It was a nice tip shot because he saw the block, and he put it in there. And then what does Cron do? Finishes the game with a super crush block. 15-8 Manitoba in game four. Match even at two. If you're a curling fan, you'll have to wait a few minutes, but stay with us. Next round coverage of the Briar coming up after we play a fifth and deciding game in the CIU men's volleyball final. This sports break is brought to you by Canadian Tire. There's a lot more to Canadian Tire for a lot less. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our TSN Control Center. I'm Gord Miller. Two afternoon games in the National Hockey League today in Edmonton. The Oilers home to Detroit. Edmonton trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Red Wings light it up early. Sergei Fedorov gets the puck to Ray Shepard. His 14th of the year makes it 1-0 Detroit, but the Oilers battle back. David Oliver moves down the wing, makes for Chris Osgood to make his move, and then puts it up top. And the Edmonton Oilers, over 500 on the road, clipped the wings by a final score of 4-2. to two. Steve Eisman had an assist, but he has not scored a goal in 15 consecutive games. Anaheim, Chicago at Belfort with a shutout, his fourth of the year, second of the year over Anaheim, as Chicago beat the Ducks by a final count of 3 to nothing. the shutout, the 27th of Belfort's career. We'll have all the news on Sports Test coming up a little later here on TSN. From headlights to transmission fluid, to tires. Inside, outside, top to bottom, Canadian Tire has you covered. Because we have the experience that comes from servicing over 10,000 cars every day and more than 65,000 auto parts and products, which means we help maintain more cars than anyone. So whatever you need, come to the one place with everything, Canadian Tire. There's a lot more for your car for a lot less. Welcome back to Sudbury. Let's check some more basketball scores for you. In the OUAA, Toronto beat Ryerson in the East Final, 79-73. Ryerson still has a shot at a wild card. Toronto's going to Halifax in two weeks for sure to the final uh, tournament there. In the West, McMaster uh, and Guelph have won. And in the women's final, congratulations to Memorial University. I don't know if Memorial's ever been to uh, the final tournament in women's basketball before, but they're going this year, and we'll have the final for you next Sunday from Lakehead University. And again, a reminder, Robert Campbell and Kevin Martin are ready to entertain you just as soon as we're done with the fifth and deciding game here in Sudbury at the CIU Men's Volleyball Tournament. The Briar continues from Halifax, so if you're a curling fan, you've been with us for about six minutes expecting to watch curling. Hang on, it's coming your way. Don't go away. Do not adjust the dial. Watch a little volleyball as a bonus, and then get set for the Briar. Hello, Victor. I remember in the 76 Olympics, 
Uh, the final was between, in Montreal, in the Forum, it was between Poland and the Soviet Union. And it was a tight one, went right to five. And the national news was to come on for CBC, and Bob Moyer still had the switch. So when people tuned in to watch the national news, they got the final of men's volleyball at the Olympics where Poland won the gold medal. There were a couple of nights when the national news got pushed back a little bit, not preempted, just pushed back just a little bit because a sports event was going on and rather than bail out in the middle of the story, they finished the story and then ran the news. So we're going to do the same thing here. We hope you'll enjoy it with us. It's been a terrific matchup so far. Two very good teams, very different teams, but very competitive teams on the court against each other. And they have battled hard here in Sudbury for the last couple of hours, and the work is not done yet. Okay, carry ball called on Koski. Now, the, the rules change when you go to game number five, tie-breaking. This means that you will score a point every single time the ball hits the floor, whether you're serving or whether you're receiving. Whoa, what an incredible recovery by Bergeron and Remyard putting it away. But ladies and gentlemen, you just saw the save of the game. Bergeron in that back row making an absolutely incredible save. I asked him what his strengths were. He said character, defense, character and defense. Well, he certainly showed the defense and he showed the character. That ball is crossing the net outside the antenna. Oh, a point for Manitoba. Side out for the Bisons trailing 2-1 here in the fifth and deciding game. Manitoba won the first 15-10. Laval won the second 15-11. And the third 16-14. Manitoba won the fourth game 15-8. And that's why we're playing game five. In that fourth set, by the way, Manitoba 65% passing. Laval 75% passing. Colin putting the ball down. Manitoba had 18 kills. That was obviously a big difference. Manitoba in that fourth set had seven stuffs. 3-2 Laval. Again, a point on every serve here now. Good combination. Great try on defense, but Laval gets credit for the point. They lead 4-2. Take a look. First one in, and the second one in, and it's down. By the way, big difference in that last one. And this is hard to believe, but Manitoba out Doug Laval. Wow, digs to eight. Point for Laval. Braun hit the net trying to hit the ball. Five to Laval. Ten points away from a second successive national championship and the fourth in six years for this program. Martins. Great shot. Great defense by Russo. Again by Remyard. But they're winning it on defense. Vic, just as the storyline suggested they might at the outset, and Garth Pischke seen enough, down 6 2, calls timeout. The Briar just ahead, but volleyball has to be finished first. Stay with us. When you get that, when you get back to it's your money. Why wait any longer than you have to to get your hands on it? Get it fast with H&R Block's cash back. We'll do all the paperwork, calculate and discount your return. There's no extra charge for preparing your return. And with cash back, we make sure you get your money as fast as it can be done. Nothing's faster, nothing's easier. So what are you waiting for? Come to H&R Block today and get your money fast. Cash back from H&R Block. Nothing's faster, nothing's easier. CIAU Men's Volleyball Championships from the Ben Avery Gymnasium at Laurentian University in Sudbury. And it's been a full gym for the last three days, and people are watching a great finale, and so are you. We're glad you're with us. You're Watson Vic Lindell with you. To tell the story of the CIU Men's Final, and it's 6-2 Laval in Game 5. Big difference right now in this game is that Manitoba is passing at less than 50%. Less than 50% of their balls are coming up to the setter. And Remyar, who's just taking that one, has already got three kills, and we're just getting started. And if you're just watching volleyball for the first time, recognize that we score points every single time. In the fifth game. In the fifth game. 
and you must win by two, and there's no cap on it, which means it could be 16, 8, 18, it could be 22, 20. Well, Zorowski hit a couple of winners for Manitoba, and now Bellado hits yet another one for the University, for Laval University. And Vincent Pichette back to serve, 7 for Laval. <laughs> Martin's got the winner that time. Pichette tried to play defense, got a piece of it, couldn't save it. So the Laval team were pushed Zorowski way back, tried to pull him out of that uh, hitting rotation, which they did. Great job by Moran to save it. It's in. The winner by Zorowski, who's got the last three from Joe's Manitoba, 7 6 Laval. Koski to serve for the Bisons. Joe's Martin said to me, he says, I'm the backup setter, Vic. He said, and in practice the other day, they took myself and we took our bench players and we beat the first team with me setting. So he made a nice set there. And now we change sides at 8 6. Laval. Billado. Look at that step around. Billado coming alive. I really thought he was getting a little fatigued, Peter. But it's amazing what your energy can do. Time out on the floor. Time out for us, too. 8 6 Laval in game five of this final. Yeah, I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. Now you got proof. Guaranteed. And Mr. Sub, fresh thinking is what we are. Just in time to see a ball fall out of bounds from Francois Bilodeau. It means a point to Manitoba. And it's 8-7 Laval here in the fifth and deciding game of the CIU men's final. And just like that, Bilodeau comes right back and hammers a winner, and it's Laval 9 and Manitoba 7. Bilodeau's got to be incredibly disappointed. He served that one. He served it out of bounds, and it cost a point, but he came right back out of the back row and scored a point just as Jules Martin's it's tough to be able to pick the top player out of Manitoba because Kron's been playing well, so has Jules Martins, and so has Koski. 9-8 Laval. Trevor Dimitrich serves for Manitoba. The ball is ruled out, I believe. Manitoba gets the point. I had to look at three lines people before I could find one that made the call. Well, it was down here on the far right-hand side, Peter, and that was ruled out. You got to win by two yeah. points. Pascal Clamont is up, he's upset, and he's calling a timeout. What a time to be out of rotation and lose a point. Be thinking about that one. Called by the umpire John Buckler of Brampton. Timeout on the floor. 10-9 Manitoba in game five of the men's CIU volleyball final. Face it. Shaving is a pain. It strips away the skin's moisture, leaving it hot, dry, and burning. But now there's proof you can take the heat out of shaving. Introducing Sensitive from Old Spice. It's the one with cooling sensates, an invigorating blast of real refreshment that cools skin scorched by shaving. Prove it to yourself. Try new Sensitive from Old Spice. It's more than a great scent. This is a cooling blast of real refreshment that takes the heat out of shaving. Here are the physical rewards for the CIAU champions, the rings, the medals, and of course a big trophy for the university trophy case. And the prize still very much in doubt here as we get down to the closing stages of game five. Laval has just got a point to tie the game, the fifth game at 10. Again, points scored on every serve in the fifth game. He must win by two points. Well, they're up there for the block, but that ball's blocked out of bounds. Laval beat Manitoba three games to one a year ago in Halifax to win the CIU title. The same two teams on court here again today. Martins out of bounds with a serve. Martins trying, trying very hard. 
committed to going cross court and just out of bounds. He hit it hard, just out of bounds. Gislain Rousseau serves for Laval. 11-11 in game five. Prime once again hammers a winner into the backcourt for Manitoba. 12-11, Bisons. I sure would not want to be the person that's going to select the outstanding player for Manitoba. Actually, I wouldn't want to be even for Laval. Now, they're indicating no touch. They're indicating the ball's out of bounds. That's 13 for Manitoba. Guy Bradbury confirms the call. Garth Pischke's been in this pressure cooker many times in the past. Manitoba in the finals 14 times in 18 years. Good save by Dimitrik. Dimitrik says he's not very flashy, but I can tell you that was one flashy save. Huge block by Kenny Cron, closing out a collegiate career on an absolutely brilliant note. Pischke looks on, Manitoba 14, Laval 11. Timeout for the Rouge Or, and Manitoba a point away from going to the championship. This is where he pumps. Watch his arms. This is where he pumps. Deep breath. Come on. Up. We got two hits. Okay, we're serving short. Serving Remy on short. Watch. 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 Watch Remy Art going for an X. He's going to pass this ball, okay, Andy? So you got to get over on the quick. Okay. Oh, he's back row. He's front row. He's front row. He got four. four three. That's okay. That's okay. Keep an eye on him. Keep me honest here. Okay. Remy Art for an X. No? That's all we can do. Okay. You want to help out on that, Adrian? Dig it, man. Dig it. Dig it. Again, if you joined us late, the Bat Briar coming up. Robert Campbell's rink from Prince Edward Island, ready to duel with Kevin Martin from Edmonton, representing Alberta. We're looking at the last point, and it goes to Laval. So it's 14-12 Manitoba now. 14-12 Manitoba. Remyard back to serve. Manitoba needs one point to win its sixth championship in Garth Pischke's 18 years as the head coach of the University of Manitoba. Remy are to serve for Laval, trailing 12-14. Yeah! And there it is! Three games to two over a very game and brilliant team from Laval University. Congratulations to both squads, but especially to Garth Fischke and the Bisons. Sixth win in Fischke's 18 years as the head coach at the University of Manitoba. The CIU on TSN has been brought to you by Mizuno. Serious performance athletic footwear, equipment, and apparel. Thanks for watching. The Briar is next. For Vic Lindel, I'm Peter Watts. So long from Laurentian University in Sudbury.